Hi, I'm Jay from Farrier Tuition, and today we're going to be making a fully fullered front to a foot model. Measure the width, which is five and a quarter, and the length, which is five and a half, which gives us ten and three quarters. Um, but we're going to be using three quarter, three eight. So I'm going to cut slightly more than I would normally cut. I'm going to cut thirteen inches of three quarter, three eight. And I need slightly more because we're going to increase the section. So we're going to let the section get wider as we make this shoe. So always put a center dot just on the outside, just to make sure I know which side is the lateral. And one in the middle, but just an eighth of an inch off. So we're an eighth of an inch longer laterally. Now, we're gonna jump our toe, so we're gonna increase the width of the section in the toe. So a nice white heat, and we're gonna keep the shoe as level as we can when we jump the steel. We're gonna look for some increased width in that area. And you can see as soon as the shoe buckles, it comes onto the anvil, much of it in place, into contact with the anvil to re-level, and then we can jump bit more into there. So we're shortening the amount of steel, but we're also widening the section in the toe. Taking any kinks out, you can see the wet width increasing in that toe area. And then we're going to slightly hem the section, not overdo it because we, like I say, we're increasing that width. So just slightly knock the edge off. So we're going to displace the material of our fuller, which is going to push it straight out again where we need it. And it's always good to use a guide. So a pair of dividers, just to scribe a line down the steel, gives you something to follow. So we're going to be just to the outside of the center, not right in the center. The hoof wall isn't as thick on this particular foot model. And you can see I'm taking my time and I'm following the line that the dividers has made for me, scratched in there. Now each fuller is taking a bite of another sort of half the length of the fuller blade. And I'm gonna be just fullering down to probably not quite half the thickness of the steel in this case. I'm walking the fuller always towards myself. And you can see, again, we've increased the width of the section. Just gonna neaten it up and not narrow. Now toe, toe bend, hold 90 degrees of our tongs. I always work on the flat, and I'm gonna put our toe quarter bends in. You can see the radius is starting to form. Now the toe is reasonably tight on this foot. So we're now going to set our toe quarter angles over the bick. So the hammer's just making contact past the bick, never in contact with the bick and crushing the material. See, it's just going past and tightening up and using that shape of the bick to form the radius of the toe. Now we can just smooth out any lumps and bumps around the bick and then clean, clean the scale off because we're just going to refuller now slightly deeper again. taking our time, because fuller around the bend is slightly harder than on the straight. Just any last minute adjustments can be done at this heat. And then just level out our foot surface, making sure our inner border is not higher than the outer border when it's slightly lower so we don't have any sole pressure and make any sort of adjustments we need to our sort of toe quarter angles. Now we're just gonna put our lateral heel on. So I'm just gonna increase the width of the lateral heel by bringing some of the steel from 
that into the branch and form our frog check. It's going to be a hammer finish heel. So for pushing everything into the middle. Now we don't have to finish our heel at this point, although it's going to be hammer finish. I'm just going to knock it back because we've got quite a bit to do in this heat. So just take the edges off, but we want to make sure our priority is to get our fullering done in this heat as well. So you need to just slightly hem. Make sure the branch is straight. So when we fuller, we can get a nice straight line. And start from our heel and walk our fuller towards ourselves to meet where we went in the toe. Now you can see we've got a nice dull orange heat now. So we can level our branch and we can go back to our heel. It's a perfect heat now for just finishing the heel, making sure all the edges are tucked into the middle and there will be no need for any rasping. But at this heat, it's perfect for us to see any sort of details. So now we want to break our quarter. So we're going to define where the quarter is on the foot, matching up with where the shoe is. And you can see I'm just drop in my hand, I've defined the quarter, and I'm just working with my hammer from the quarter back to the hilt to continue the radius. Once the shoe's clean, we can now finish our fullering to full depth, which is probably gonna be about seven eighths of the, the thickness of the steel. So full it all the way through the branch and then through into the toe just so everything blends together. You've got to be conscious at this point that you've also got to put your nail holes in, so make sure you've got enough heat for stamping and pritching in. I always like to use a pair of dividers just to get my toenail in the correct position. Heel nail goes in the widest point and then we're straight in the middle of the other two. Slightly more pitch with our pritchel. Should only need one hit really to get through over the pritchel hole, it's a nice cold heat, so it's not gonna buckle too much. Now we can turn it over, make sure everything's clean. We'll just go for a small level to start with. Now we're gonna finish our branch. So I'm gonna work on the edge, um, either on the foot surface edge while the anvil does uh, the ground surface and then vice versa. So just tucking in all those edges, any lumps and bumps, going to be forged back into the steel. We're going to get parallel lines, everything looking tidy. Now we're going to just finish our branch and make it look nice and clean. So clean any scale off. And we're going to work on coining our branch. So making it really well finished. So we're going to work up the inside edge and then the outside edge just to define those nice sharp edges that we've, we've made. And slightly level on the ground surface. Now you may have to make slight um, alterations that can be done at quite a dull heat because we've made the shoe to the shape of the foot now. Exactly. Now inside heel we're just going to slightly safe off so we're not going to reduce any width we're just taking that edge off so if the horse brushes it's not going to come into contact and we're going to forge our heel into our branch so the frog check goes into the middle of the section and then the outside of our heel goes into the middle few knockbacks just to finish the heel and then forge everything into the middle but remember we've got to get our fullering done in this heat so we don't have to finish our heel we can come back to our heel at the end of the heat so a slight bit of hemming just for our fuller displacement and then we can level our branch make sure it's straight and then we can blend our fullering from the toe all the way up the branch walking the fuller towards ourselves always around sort of half the length of the fuller blade. You don't want to have tiny little um, steps and you don't want to have too big a steps. You've always got to be overlapping. The hammer comes into contact when the fuller is straight. Now we can level our branch. Now we've fullered 
to about half depth and we've got that lovely dull orange heat and we can just finish our heel taking all our edges into the middle and our finish heel which won't require any rasping. Now inside branch, again we've got to locate our quarter, so we're going to define the quarter and then we're going to shape the shoe from the quarter back to the heel, forming that radius by just dropping our tongs hand. The hammer is always working in the same place. Now, any slight adjustments could be made from the toe quarter. But you can see the shoe being kept level at all times and the tongs are doing all the movement of the shoe. The hammer is working in the same place. I'm going to slightly hem just blend our hemming in around the branch. And then once level, we should have enough heat now to finish our fullering and then get our nail hold put in on our medial branch. Fullering can be blended all the way through from the center dot, all the way through the branch up to the hill. So everything is at the same depth. Once fullered, we can then apply our nail holes using our stamp in line with the lateral toenail. A couple of, couple of sharp hits should be enough to, so you feel the face of the anvil. Medial heel is slightly in front of the lateral heel and then we go straight in the middle of the two. Nice cold heat now. We can go over the critchell hole and we should get nice crisp nail holes no distortion because the shoe's not too hot, it's at the perfect heat. Now again, we can go through our finishing process. We just want to level slightly to start with and then we can take our edges off. Again, using our hammer and the bit to do alternate edges. So at this pace, in this case, we're using the hammer on the foot surface. Now we're going to the ground surface and the bit is working on the foot surface. Get all those bumps in. Now, always important to clean the anvil, clean the shoe, and then just finish that branch by using firm blows all the way from toe to heel. And then put a slight bit of boxing on our heels, ready to fit the shoe. Make any slight adjustments at this point. And at this point, I'd probably want to be slightly narrower than the foot, because when I come to clip it, then the shoe always opens up slightly. Now, I'm gonna use uh, a ball pane to clip this shoe. So I'm gonna hold over um, probably the width of the, the edge that hasn't been fullered, and I'm hitting down to start with and now hit it into the edge of the anvil so downwards to start with and then inwards into that edge to form a nice sharp step that I can now um, place on the edge of the anvil and now I can draw my base of the clip onto the face of the anvil so working on the base Working on the base is important to make sure you get the, the width of the base first before you rush into trying to get your clip. So working on the base still, my hammer's half on and half off the face. And now you can see I've started working towards myself and drawing the clip towards me, leaving plenty of strength. It's very important to keep your, keep your shoe high as well and not sort of chop off your clip. A lot of people with their tongs will drop below the anvil face and then they get a clip which is stuck up at an angle and, and getting chopped off. Now we can just clean our shoe now and tidy up and level behind the clip. So we're going to set either side which is going to level the shoe. And you can see not too sharp a point, we just want a nice sort of rounded triangular type shape. And then we're going to set our clip over the bic. Don't be in a rush to set your clip. You know, probably two or three times 
just to make sure you get it at a right angle and you're not bending the clip, you're setting it in from the base. You can make any sort of final adjustments at this point to your shape. Always making sure the shoe is flat and level as we go. And once the shoe's cleaned up, then it should be ready to apply to the foot. So let's just make any final adjustments to what we need. It's really contracted in the heel, so we're probably going to need to knock it on slightly more. Have a look and see how close we are to fitting to our foot model. And there we have the fully folded front made to a foot model.